Blood would flow like endless rivers if the humans joined this war, as entire worlds burned and billions perished in the cataclysmic crossfire. Harry Scott felt the immense weight of that horrific possibility as his shuttle touched down on the Benzite homeworld. His Benzite liaison Hydrus greeted him, serpentine body tightly coiled with uncharacteristic anxiety. Thank the stars you're here, Hydrus hissed, glancing over his shoulder as he hurried Harry to a waiting transport. As they sped toward the capital, Hydrus's voice dropped to a whisper. The Kral are coming. Those cruel bastards are infamous for conquering worlds and enslaving populations. Now they want our resource-rich system. His clawed hands trembled. Our only hope is an alliance with you humans. Your advanced weapons and legendary battle prowess could turn the tide. Hydrus paused, gulping. But many fear that human involvement will escalate the war beyond imagining. You're known for aggressive tactics, uncompromising brutality. The towering government building loomed ahead as Hydrus turned to Harry, desperation etched across his scaly features. Please convince the Council we need your aid, but also that you'll show restraint. If humans fight in this war with your usual ferocity, I fear none of us will survive the fallout. Entire species could be wiped out. Harry nodded solemnly, the Benzite's fate now resting heavily on his shoulders as they entered the building. He knew the humans had to succeed here in forging peace, or the consequences for the galaxy would be incomprehensibly dire. The doors groaned open, revealing a dimly lit chamber. A dozen reptilian eyes turned to fix on Harry as he entered alongside Hydrus. The circular table at the center was surrounded by Benzite officials, their postures stiff with apprehension. Harry took his seat, the chair creaking beneath him. The council leader, an aged Benzite with a jagged scar across his crest, began to speak. His voice was low and raspy, each word weighted with fatigue. The Kral have pushed further into our territory, he said, his clawed fingers tapping against the table's surface. Another outpost, gone. Supplies, taken, lives, lost. Harry leaned forward, his mind already whirring with possible strategies. Infiltration, sabotage, a coordinated strike on their command ship. Each plan carried its own risks, its own potential for catastrophe. Suddenly the chamber doors burst open. A young Benzite stumbled in, his scales ashen. A Krull warship, he gasped, in orbit. They're demanding our surrender, unconditional. The room erupted into chaos. Some councillors shouted for immediate capitulation, insisting that resistance was futile. Others pounded the table, calling for a preemptive strike before the Krull could land their forces. Harry stood, his chair scraping against the floor. The room fell silent. We feign surrender, he said, his voice steady. Draw them in close. Then a team of my best operatives slips aboard their ship and disables their weapons from within. Murmurs of dissent rippled through the council. The plan was bold, risky. But Hydra spoke up, his voice cutting through the doubts. It's our best chance, he insisted. We avoid all-out war, but still strike a blow. Harry's people have the skills we need. As the council deliberated, Harry felt a cold sense of unease settling in his gut. He turned to Hydra's, his voice low. There's more to this. The Krull's aggression, their timing, it doesn't add up. Hydra's glanced around nervously, then leaned in. There are whispers, he breathed, of a third party, a puppet master pulling the strings. Some say human, some say something else. But whoever they are, they want this war, and they'll do anything to see it happen. Harry's blood turned to ice in his veins. If Hydrus was right, then this went beyond a simple border skirmish. They were pieces on a chessboard, moved by an unseen hand. The council's voices grew louder, more urgent. A decision was being reached. Harry knew his plan would be greenlit, that wheels would start to turn. But as he looked out at the faces around him, frightened, desperate, resolved, he couldn't shake the feeling that they were all hurtling towards something they couldn't begin to understand. That in the shadows beyond the stars, something was watching, waiting. And so very, very hungry. With the Council's reluctant blessing, Harry assembled a crack team of human operatives, each hand-picked for their unique skills and unwavering loyalty. They boarded a Benzite shuttle, 
ostensibly a diplomatic envoy, but beneath the veneer of diplomacy they were a coiled spring ready to strike at a moment's notice. As the shuttle approached the looming Krull warship, Harry felt a growing sense of unease, like a cold hand gripping his spine. The vessel was a behemoth, bristling with weapons and armoured plating. It hung in space like a predator, waiting to pounce. The shuttle docked with a metallic clang, and the team was greeted by a phalanx of Krull soldiers, their faces hidden behind dark helmets. They escorted the humans through the ship's labyrinthine corridors, their boots echoing on the metal grating. The bridge was a cavernous space, dominated by a massive viewscreen that showed the inky void of space. At the center stood the Krull commander, a towering figure with eyes like black holes. He regarded Harry with a mixture of contempt and curiosity. Harry began to speak, his voice steady as he laid out the terms of the Benzite's surrender. But even as the words left his lips, his eyes darted to his team, giving the signal they had rehearsed a hundred times. In an instant, the room exploded into motion. The human operatives moved with blinding speed, their weapons flashing as they neutralized the Krull guards with ruthless efficiency. Harry found himself face to face with the commander, their weapons locked in a deadly stalemate. But before either could make a move, the commander's communicator crackled to life. A voice distorted and inhuman filled the air. Well done, Commander. You have played your part perfectly. Now, execute the human and prepare for the next phase. Harry's blood turned to ice as the realization dawned on him. The Krull were not the true enemy, but merely pawns in a much larger game. The Commander's finger tightened on the trigger, his eyes gleaming with a fanatic's zeal. Suddenly the doors to the bridge burst open, and Hydrus charged in, his scales glistening with sweat. He had followed Harry's team, unwilling to let them face the danger alone. With a cry of desperation, he lunged at the commander, grappling for the weapon. A shot rang out, deafening in the confined space. Hydra staggered back, a dark stain spreading across his chest. He crumpled to the floor, his eyes wide with shock. In that moment of distraction, Harry seized his chance. He disarmed the commander with a brutal twist, sending the weapon clattering to the ground. He hauled the Krull to his feet, his grip like iron. Talk, Harry growled, his voice low and dangerous. Who is behind this? What do they want? The commander laughed, a harsh grating sound. You have no idea what you're up against, human. The overseer sees all, knows all. He has been planning this for centuries, moving pieces on a galactic chessboard. And now the end game begins. Harry's mind raced as he processed the implications. An unknown mastermind, manipulating events from the shadows, a war that threatened to engulf the galaxy in flames, and at the center of it all, a figure known only as the Overseer. With the Krull warship under their control, Harry knew they had to act fast. They had to find this Overseer to unravel the web of lies and deceit before it was too late. The fate of not just the Benzites, but of every species in the galaxy, hung in the balance. As he looked down at Hydrus's still form, a cold determination settled over Harry. No matter the cost, no matter the sacrifice, he would see this through to the end. He would find the Overseer and bring them to justice, even if it meant walking into the very heart of darkness itself. Back on the Benzite homeworld, Harry and his team hunched over a sea of data pads, their eyes bloodshot from exhaustion. They combed through intercepted transmissions, decrypted communiques, anything that might shed light on the Overseer's endgame. As Harry scrolled through yet another intelligence report, a pattern began to emerge. References to destabilization, mutual destruction, power vacuum. A chill ran down his spine as the pieces fell into place. He turned to his team, his voice low and urgent. The Overseer, he doesn't just want war, he wants to bleed both sides dry, leave us vulnerable to his real attack. Silence hung heavy in the room. Finally, one of the operatives spoke up. How do we stop it? We're running out of time. Harry leaned forward, elbows on the table. We force his hand, make a move so bold, so provocative that he has to respond. He outlined his plan. A staged attack, Benzite markings, human casualties. Shaking heads and darkened expressions greeted his words. 
This could be the spark that ignites the war. We'd be no better than the Overseer. Harry slammed his hand on the table, silencing the dissent. Don't you see? This is our only chance to draw him out, make him reveal himself before it's too late. Reluctantly, the team nodded, their faces grim with resolve. They set to work, each step feeling like a betrayal of the peace they had sworn to protect. Days later, news of the attack spread like wildfire. Grainy footage of Benzite ships smoking ruins of human settlements, outrage and calls for vengeance echoed from every corner of human space. In the halls of power, fleets were mobilized, war plans drawn up. The Benzite government, still reeling from the Kral incursion, scrambled to deny involvement, but their pleas fell on deaf ears. Harry watched the chaos unfold, his heart heavy with the knowledge that he had set these events in motion, but even as the galaxy teetered on the precipice of war, he watched for signs of the Overseer's hand, knowing that the true Puppet Master would be unable to resist such an opportunity. Just as the first shots were about to be fired, Harry's communicator chirped. A garbled message, a familiar voice, Hydrus. Harry, I know, Overseer's location. Meet me, coordinates attached, hurry. Harry's breath caught in his throat. Hydrus was alive, and he had found the key to unraveling this whole sordid mess. He gathered his team, his eyes hard with determination. They knew it was a trap, knew the Overseer would be waiting for them, but they also knew it was their last, best hope to stop the coming apocalypse. As they boarded their ship and set course for the rendezvous, Harry couldn't shake the feeling that this was the calm before the storm, that whatever awaited them at those coordinates, it would be a battle unlike any they had faced before. But he also knew that they had no choice. The fate of the galaxy hung in the balance, and they were the only ones who could tip the scales back towards peace. Even if it meant walking into the jaws of the beast itself. Harry's ship hurtled through the asteroid field, its hull groaning under the strain as they wove between the tumbling rocks. The desolate expanse seemed to stretch on forever, a graveyard of shattered planetoids and frozen debris. Suddenly a blip appeared on the radar screen. Harry leaned forward, his eyes narrowing. There, he said, pointing to a distant speck among the asteroids, Hydrus's shuttle. As they drew closer, the extent of the damage became clear. The shuttle's hull was pockmarked with scorch marks and gaping holes, its engines dark and lifeless. Harry's team exchanged grim looks as they maneuvered their ship alongside the crippled vessel. The airlock hissed open, and they stepped into the shuttle's dim interior. The air was stale and thick with the acrid scent of burned wiring. They found Hydrus slumped over the controls, his scales dull and his breathing shallow. Harry knelt beside him, gently lifting his head. Hydrus's eyes flickered open, unfocused and glazed with pain. Harry, he rasped, his voice barely above a whisper. The overseer, he's... Hydrus broke off, coughing weakly. Harry leaned closer, his heart pounding. Who is he, Hydrus? Who's the overseer? With a trembling hand, Hydrus reached into his tunic and pulled out a small data drive. He pressed it into Harry's palm, his claws leaving shallow scratches on Harry's skin. "'The human,' Hydrus whispered, his voice fading. "'A general, gone mad with power, the evidence, it's all there.' Hydrus shuddered, his eyes rolling back in his head. Harry gripped his hand tightly, feeling the life drain from his friend's body. "'Hydrus, stay with me,' he pleaded, but it was too late. Hydrus went limp his final breath escaping in a soft sigh. Harry bowed his head, grief and rage warring in his heart. The overseer, a human, one of his own kind, responsible for so much death and suffering. Suddenly an alarm blared through the shuttle. Harry's head snapped up, his eyes widening in shock. A massive warship had just decloaked nearby, its hull bristling with weapons and shielding. The overseer's flagship, Harry stumbled back to his own ship, barking orders to his team. They were outgunned and outmatched, but they had to try. They had to stop the Overseer, no matter the cost. As the flagship bore down on them, its weapons glowing with deadly energy, Harry made a decision. A desperate, impossible gambit. Ram the reactor, he said, his voice steady despite the fear churning in his gut. 
We'll take that bastard down with us. His team hesitated for only a moment before springing into action. They poured every ounce of power into the engines, aiming their ship directly at the flagship's pulsing core. The impact was cataclysmic. The two ships collided in a blinding flash of light and heat, metal screaming and twisting as they tore into each other. Harry was thrown from his seat, his body slamming against the bulkhead with bone-crushing force. Through the haze of pain and smoke, he could see his ship disintegrating around him, consoles sparking and hull plates shearing away into the void. With the last of his strength, Harry dragged himself to the transmission console. His fingers slick with blood danced across the keys, uploading the contents of Hydrus's data drive to every corner of the galaxy. As the flagship began to break apart, escape pods jettisoning from its ruined hull, Harry felt a grim sense of satisfaction. The overseer's plans were exposed, his machinations laid bare for all to see. But even as the wreckage of the two ships tumbled through the asteroid field, even as the last of his life slipped away, Harry knew that this was only the beginning. The Overseer was still out there, a shadowy figure lurking in the depths of space, and as long as he lived, as long as his twisted ambitions went unchecked, the galaxy would never know true peace. It would fall to others now to carry on the fight, to stand against the darkness and the chaos no matter the odds. For in the end that was all they could do, all anyone could do in the face of such relentless evil. Fight and hope and never surrender. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.